Hi there guys, Sam here. Welcome back to another video. Join me for another Q&A in a GTI 40th Club Sport Edition, a Mark 7. Um, we've just been out for a drive in it. The owner's been out for a drive in it. I've been out for a drive in it. Videos to come soon on that. Um, I'm pretty much blown away. But if you're not familiar with these Q&As, basically just talk with the owner, passionate enthusiast about these kind of cars. This is a proper special car. And yeah, just generally talk all things cars, talk about the car. And yeah, if you're interested in a 40th edition, I would recommend staying tuned and listening to this basically because you'll understand everything about it. Um, I thought I knew a lot. Scott knows a lot more than me about them as well from researching it. Um, but yeah, let's get straight into this. So thank, first of all, honestly, thank you so much for coming down and thank nice you so much welcome. for allowing me the chance to drive it. Nice um, I'm still, I'm lost for words a little bit because you know how there's always more more to say about it. Um, but yeah, I guess straight away, tell us like a little bit about your, like, your car history, just the initial sort of stages that eventually has led you to this yeah. 40th club yeah. sport. Well, I started on fast forward, so I was a real Ford guy. Same real as me, forward. same as me. They all, We always start at fast forwards, don't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> like uh, escorts, fiestas, a bit back in the day, like type of thing. Yeah. Um, did that, but always like my hot hatches, always been a hot hatch fan. Got into golfs, I had a couple of Mark IVs. Okay. Had a Mark VI, um, took a break from Volkswagen, had a... VXR, Astra VXR for a okay. while. That was that was that was a nice car. Quick, wasn't the the best handling car I've ever driven, but heard, it, yeah. they were it was a rocket when it was yeah. when it was tuned. Um, then I went to an Abarth five nine five competition, which was literally the go kart on wheels, <laughs> Michelin Cup twos, Brembo brakes. You were saying yeah. that that is the way to do that, it as well. Yeah, with the tires. Yeah, that was mental. And then um, I had that five months brand new car, and then this came along. So that that promptly went. Yeah, to so get this and this, yeah, this is it for me. So at the start of the year, so we're filming this on what are we today? Twenty first, twenty third, twenty third of October. Yeah. So February, yeah, February all this, you, yeah, yeah. Literally so, just before the the madness of the prices. Yeah. So if you people have tuned into my channel where I've done stuff on like Auto Trader and bits, that was literally the best times you could have bought it. Yeah. And then every week has just gone skyrocketing. Yeah, yeah. Like like I said to you earlier, it's weird how the club sports have kind of their prices haven't gone mad. But they've stayed sort of consistent. Like they were this kind of price before yep. the madness. And like I say, I think after everything calms down, the, the, the club sport prices will stay sort of linear, really, to I, be fair. I, I think so. I think they're proper special, to be honest. Yeah, and... yeah, they are. They're definitely definitely something else. You can't go wrong with a Golf R engine and a GTI no, chassis. You, no, you definitely can't. So, so your spec at this 40th, I mean... It is. It, it, you've literally got the exact spec that I would choose. Okay. Um. But what sort of like um. Yeah. I suppose what sort of options could you go for? And what ones did you choose? Um. Well, of, for me, it had, it had to have this the Recaro buckets. So the, the Recaro. I will put some some clips on this right now. These are probably some of the best seats I've ever sat in. Um, yeah, they are. They're stunning. That like literally everyone loves them. If I thought <laughs> if I thought my R had pretty decent bolsters and it was pretty solid, this is like it is rock solid. Yeah. You were not yeah. coming out of this yeah. <laughs> at all. Well, they obviously they were standard in the Club Sport S, which was designed for the Nurburgring ring. So they they've got to do the job. Exactly, they've yeah. got they've got to, they've got to work proper. Yeah. And... Um, so I, I had to have the seats. I wanted the Dyn Audio system, which is a, a great system. Um, the subwoofer and the spare spare wheel wear was. Uh, interesting find when I found out. Oh, really? Yeah, it's got, so basically it's so, mounted in the spare wheel well, a big oh, sub sub okay. well, I'll have to, yeah, we'll have to show that. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's interesting. So is that from stock then? That, or is that someone else's? It's something? just an option. It's a, it's a stock option. So wow. the Dyn Audio came with the upgraded speakers, the amplifier and the subwoofer in the spare wheel well. And okay. it is, it's one of the best sounding systems I've ever had in the car. <laughs> and I've paid some good money for sound systems awesome. in the past as well. That's good. And obviously being a golf as well, it actually kind of keeps it all inside. Yeah, as well. yeah, it's yes. Like yeah, it's, it's very, it's, it's very quiet outside, but inside you get, you, you, you get, you get everything you need. You get the noise. So, so the seats are definitely, like you say, it's definitely a must. So from, from new, you were saying these would have cost about two and a half. Yeah, I think they were two and a half thousand pounds for the, for the optional extra. Which I'd say is, I, I would be going for this back in 2016. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Especially with the prices that they are now. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. That's used as well. You know, it's been talking thousands of pounds. Used. Yeah. I actually went to um, Volkswagen to ask how much they would be, and you cannot buy them complete. You have to buy every part. 
and then they make them from factory. So that if you went to Volkswagen now and asked for them, they're seven thousand pounds each. No, so no wonder why they go for yeah, yeah, for four thousand, six thousand pounds. So it's gonna be hard for me to get these in my car. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, uh, it'll be yeah, you'll it'll, get them out of my car. It would be mate. tricky, but no, they they look fantastic. Yeah, they are lovely. And it's a, a, having driven Mark Eight. 45 edition it's a real shame that they didn't stick something like that yeah, as an option i have I th- to say i think everyone that uh people i've spoke to that have got four, edition 40s they're surprised that with what you could get for the edition 40s like special unique parts you weren't getting that there's a difference between the 45 and the just the normal club sport yeah that, that, that is that is a real a real strange one and i guess um not that a 40 if without these seats is any is any oh no the, any the standard cloth and the lever seats are lovely as well yeah but this does really make it special and quite a hard find yes so you did really well yeah actually. yeah you finded your this yeah whole spec. yeah I've been, I've been like i said i've been wanting one of these since 2016 i got to drive one and yeah it took a long time to find it had yeah. to be a free door it had to be red and you've got to be patient about these things yeah. as well i think a lot of people can be very impulsive when trying to yes. get a car yeah, take, yeah absolutely take your time oh no definitely yeah, yeah. And the thing is, as well, is, is you've got to, you've got to weigh up what you're willing to accept and not accept. Like, you could find the perfect spec car, but it may have a little bit higher mileage. Yep. Some people, it's all about the mileage, and they they're happy with whatever spec they get as long as it's a low mileage. So, for me, it had to have the spec. I would have taken a, maybe an extra owner, an extra ten thousand yep. miles. I would have took that just to get the no, the spec, just because they. Is a harder spec to find. No, definitely, definitely. It suits you to the ground. So, oh, yeah, I love it. <laughs> manual gearbox. So, my R's are manual, which is a little bit more controversial because they didn't sell as many R's in manuals. It's mm. mainly DSG. Um, I'm I'm all for a six speed manual. I mean, I think we know where the future's going yes, in 10 yeah, years. Yeah, we yeah. know it's all going to be automatic. Yes. I mean, electric cars don't even have gears. So, no. it's going to be as dull as anything. So, while you can get one of those. Yeah, th- yeah. I, ha- I wanted the manual purely because the Club Sport S had the manual. Um, I'm a, I'm a manual guy. Yeah, I've yeah. been driving since like late '90s, so yeah, yeah. it's all I've ever known as manuals. And I think if you if you want a, for me, it was the if you wanted like a draggy car for like quarter miles or mm-hmm. traffic lights and stuff, I'd be going four wheel drive DSG. But if you want something like a B road basher, I live down by Dartmoor, so you've got like yeah, decent roads. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like I like my manual and I like my my front wheel drive cars it suits it really no well. definitely definitely you get to it's a real properly engaging car and check out like my drive and like review the kind of the overview of this car in sort of like a, another video i'll put all the in the descriptions once they're all out um but yeah for, there's so much more control because there's so much more different things you have to do yes front wheel drive you've got to you've got to balance the power otherwise you're going to be spinning it up clutch you kind of got to get that right you got to get the gears right yeah but something can we broke be briefly spoke about like what car could you kind of go for and we mentioned a little bit about porsche the one thing that i know about porsche manual gearboxes is they're really really long gearing yes like yeah, painfully yeah yeah long yeah in the golfs and it's the exact same with mine really really short yeah really the, the, really nice yes and and if like um if you have a tune on it as well it's surprising how quick you can go through the gears as well absolutely flies yeah doesn't it? yeah definitely and like you said like where would i go it would be something like a porsche Oh, uh, that I would think I would go, but when you're talking eighty, ninety thousand pounds for something that I would want, to swap and this for you're not going to get for another three people in the back. No, no, no. We'll get a couple of mates in the back or anything like that. Exactly, we'll, and that's and, bit, and the shopping as well because I do the shopping in this as well. Yeah, exactly. And it's it's a weird one because again, a lot of my channel being about the community, getting people involved. I very much think it's more about sharing it and yes. with other people. Yeah, yeah and definitely. I do as much as I love my Porsche. I'm a big fan of like Caymans and stuff like that. They are very much like. You know, one or two people, generally yourself, is going to drive yeah, it. Yeah. Perhaps it doesn't have as big a community. I'm sort of finding that out over the years, to be fair. I, more people have kind of... I've found more of a community with sort of like the golf. So yes, that's kind of why yeah. I've kind of been, been speaking yeah, about Yeah, I've, I've made some really good friends just from having this car. And like they've got the same cars as well. And it's and it's weird because obviously I've had golfs um, before, GTIs, and I've had like the VXR yep. and, and the Abarth. And I've got talking to people in the community and people have been really friendly and yep. really good with information and stuff like that but it's weird how in the the club sport i've actually made some like proper friends that no, definitely. are going we'll talk like every couple of days and been and stayed with and you know and, that, and that's really weird for me that and, and that is just a great thing about these cars and this is why i kind of like community type channels and meeting people who meeting actual owners because you're never going to get this kind of experience when you actually go to a dealer when no, you speak to someone no. they don't care they just want your money that yeah. is literally it when you talk to people who own it it's like oh you know yeah 
don't forget about this you, you yeah. learn little things yeah and, and you... yeah and the thing is is what i found as well with, with people that i've met is everyone's different everyone's got different priorities in their life yeah. so some people want the five door and they've got the reasons for the five door and they've got experience with five doors so if you need someone that's got something that you want to know about you can always find that from people yeah. and they're really friendly yeah can't get enough of information from people to no be fair. no definitely not so this is free door yeah which, free door. Uh, yeah as must you, have to have to be done yeah so has to be a free door again I'm, and i'm not just saying this because you're sitting next to me you've literally gone free door manual is is exactly what I've done. yeah yeah, yeah. And I, I wanted the um 19 inch pretorias yeah yeah well. they, they look good as well they yeah um, they're, they're good they're good um good size they're a little bit lighter than the brushes yep as well so it was um you get a little bit more feel from them yeah no no definitely it's not definitely. and it's not too hard a hard a ride with the dcc as well because dcc well, was a must that's the thing as well so dcc is an option on these yes. 40th as yeah. well so there's a lot of things actually that you know from a base spec you would actually be missing out on quite a bit yeah yeah so, yeah like it's all got parking sensors as well on this so as that, well rear, on the rear standard? no that's not standard that's mm. the option extra as well i think that's how they get you <laughs> yeah but i know that some people have done retrofitted with parking cameras okay so there's ways around it i know that they apparently i'm sure someone said that you, you can get front parking sensors on these but the front bumpers are over a thousand pounds just in parts so i think if you were to want to do that it's you've got to really want to you've do got it, to really want front yeah, parking yeah, sensors yeah. i've reversed into the garage i've got parking sensors that's you, a, yeah every mirrors that's enough for me yeah exactly and it's a golf that, yeah, yeah again that's why i love them even with free door you don't lose any visibility no, no, or no, anything no. like that it, it's perfect and actually yeah. you haven't got a sunroof which is again the same as no mine. it was an option though another another option yeah <laughs> but it, so again that that one's a very rare one we've there's a, a guy that was in our little um group chat yep. on the forum and stuff like that and he spent, I think it was about six to eight weeks looking just for a car because he wanted, for the, he wanted the pan roof. Because wow. because that's interesting. And I had it the same with the um, forty five edition owner because these cars have a black roof. Yeah. I actually prefer them without the pan roof. I, I know I know um, a sunroof is black anyway. Yes. So yeah. It does ruin the lines. Yeah. A oh yeah. Bit. You can yeah. you can when you just get close to it you can see there's definitely a sunroof there and like the yeah. black and then I think as well with the glass as well it looks almost like two different colours yeah. if that makes sense at the right angle you do know but, and, um, and if you're like we've had some fun some pretty great roads yeah here. yeah, yeah. it's, it's it, some it, nice roads here yeah. if you only if you take one wrong undulation undulation or something like that I just worry about a crack or something yes, that is yeah. the only thing just, I, th I think somewhere it's I probably read, rare yeah, but yeah I think somewhere read that people were saying that if you were having the pan roof you should try sticking with the 18s to stop that like, I, I, rigidity to the point where it could crack something it would just be in my mind even if it's any it's no more than like your windscreen cracking or something yeah yeah like exactly that, yeah yeah it, yeah it would just be on the back of yeah back plus of it's extra mind. weight in it it's glass extra weight this yeah. has got to be proper lightweight and these these cars are light and unfortunately with the mark eights and it's not even the like volkswagen's fault or anything safety safety sound deadening it's sound deadening yeah. laws you know gpfs opfs it all just adds weight yeah I mean, like a three-door manual of this, I reckon is probably, I mean, a, a random figure would probably be somewhere like 80 kilos lighter than a five-door DSG. If not yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and you're going to feel that yeah. all the yeah. way. And then the Club Sport S is another 100 kilos lighter than this. Well, yeah, so Club Sport S, no back seats. You've got the same wing backs here. You've also got, like, um, they literally take out, like, the boot floor and all the sound deadening. Don't yeah, they? yes, so, there's, a, there's a lot of sound deadening removed. They even removed the sound deadening from underneath the engine, uh, the bonnet, sorry, covering the engine. And also you've got a aluminium subframe. So that that and it's actually surprising because when we were talking on the drive as well, the changes are actually not there's not masses compared no, to a no, 40th, is no, it? it's it's some uh some slightly uh softer bushings are in this one, yeah. The aluminium subframe, uh, obviously, some sound dampening is removed, so obviously, the back seat's gone. They put the um strut bar across the back, with yeah, the netting. yeah, that looked quite cool, although yeah, it does you, look cool. Although you then can't get like if you wanted a bike or something, <laughs> no, no, you can't, but um, there are people that have gone like a different route with the retrofitted where you can unclip them so they Got can it. still get their bikes in and stuff okay which which kind of makes, makes sense. sense yeah but like um what vw spoke about quite a lot was um a bit of downforce on this car now now yes. i know it's not going to be like huge massive no, no, or crazy no, no. but it genuinely will work yes you yeah. can see the gaps yeah it's it? um it's something like 70 mile an hour or 75 mile an hour it's just to try and curb that little front wheel yeah lift that you get in the hot hot hatches which and, and it does and it's identical aero to a class 4s yes which is crazy. yeah so like in a, in a fast glimpse you could 
second uh, double take, you would think it was a club sport. So you, well, you wouldn't know, but you'd know. Uh, but that's the thing as well; it stands out as a club sport because they've got the same arrow, and same it, look, and, and it, a three door. Definitely three door and the manual. So yeah. if, if you're like like if I saw you, well, when you pulled in, I would generally be like class West. Has he got a class West? Yeah, like, you, you would generally. Yeah, yeah. You genuinely yeah. would think that, which is which is amazing. But um, so for you, so you've gone for so. Michelin PS4 S tires on yes. here. Was that something that you fitted when you got the car? Uh, they, they had them on already, but I've had experience with them. Um, when I had the Abarth, I had the Michelin Cup 2s. Yep. So, love Michelin tires. I've had them. I've had enough of cars with them on to know that the tires do make a massive difference as I, well. I, I think that's the thing. That what? <laughs> and I'll, I'll repeat this in basically every video. The tires are basically everything to your car. And don't necessarily waste your time trying to find... Uh, a lot of premium brands are pretty good, but I've got the standard PS4s on mine, on my 18s. I think they're great. PS4S, you're just going to get that more... Yeah, it's almost like a little more sporty step, and then the Cup 2s again, a bit more sporty. For, for I wouldn't want to run P uh, Cup 2s in the winter, that's, that's for not, sure. Not here. I mean, we're, like no. you said, we're end of October, and it's already looking a little bit uh, grim, yeah, to uh, say the least. Slimy, greasy roads. It, exactly, and you can see it's already quite dark. We're not filming this, I mean, what is it, like 10 a.m.? It, yeah. it should be lighter than this. Yeah, <laughs> this, be, this, yeah. this is just what the UK is like. Yeah. Um, and again, another you've gone for Club Sport S discs and pads. Yes, well, oh, I, did, I did. Yeah, yeah, I went for the Club Sport S discs. The vent, they've got the aluminium bell, so they save. I think it's they save nearly a kilo per brake disc. So, and that's unsprung weight as well. Yeah, so that's yeah. really yeah. Important. So you're saving two kilos just on the front discs, and then what I've got is Brembo pads and discs on the rear. Gotcha. And, pads and the front. they look great and they, yeah. they fill the wheel really nicely as yeah well. yeah they're, they're a good size and I, I obviously can't say what ones were on before i don't really know but the difference was definitely very very you, you, noticeable no definitely and you've basically you've basically got club sport s more practical <laughs> yeah yeah i've got i've got the club sport s family version yeah because sort of um like i like i'm lucky this year i've driven like um a 718 gt4 yeah. round track and the one thing I noticed going from that compared to like any other car is you get like like the stones, you feel them yes. more sort of bubbling up. I imagine that's what you'd probably notice more in a Club Sport S to this. Yeah. Which, to be honest, do you want that all the time? No, I don't know. No. It's a weird one. And I think it's noisier as well, obviously, because sound is. deadening's gone as well. So I think you'll get a bit more of a drone on motorway miles and stuff like that. It's So I think this is like the, the, the balance, really. You've got everything you want, looks-wise. You've got the handling, you've got the aero. A little tune you can have the same power as a club sports even more just for a stage one tune with no mods as well you know and so. the ea triple a engines just they can just do everything oh yeah, just, yeah they're so yeah. so good yeah such a such a good engine yeah. um it will just go down and that's probably why they kind of carried it over to the mark eight it's why you can get them in like every other vw brand they, they yeah, sell them in yeah. the cans bag, they sell bag, them in yeah, skodas they're, it's... they're throughout the bag range exactly you know? so you know you're kind of safe with it and i guess on the hot hatch front you look at like say like a Mark Three Focus RS. People kind of question that two point three Eco Boost. It had its issues. Yeah, that, yeah. that's what I kind of heard. It's because it's not run. I know they run it in the um, Mark Four ST now. You know, you learn by trying it throughout the years. Yeah, and that's what VW have done. You know, yeah, and it's just made such a great engine. <coughs> yeah, because obviously this one's the more updated version from what was in the Mark Six, and the, the Mark Six engine was a good good engine as well. You know, exactly. They keep they keep picking up, keep picking up, but um. Yeah, so we were trying to work out. So, how we how many cars do you think they built for the UK? Well, from what we found and what we've looked online and stuff, it was the UK had a thousand build slot allocation. Yep. But it looks like they only actually built about five hundred and forty in total, from what we can see on um, online. So yeah, that was a bit of a surprise. I, a, I know a lot less. Yeah. Yeah, and I, th I think the thing that catches people out is because. Um, when Volkswagen UK decided to do the build plates, yep. they just made a thousand plates, sent them to different <laughs> dealers. So as the cars went to dealers, the dealers were putting them in. So they didn't, they weren't done numerically. No. So they were just literally pick a plate out of the box, put it on the car. So just so, so you know you haven't got the same yeah, as someone yeah, else's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so mine's number six fifty. But it's a good number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good, yeah, it's a good number. number. Yeah, it's a, it's a good number. It'll do me. No, definitely. And you actually get like. Um, and we were talking briefly about like the extra touches you get from this from say a 45 
again sorry 45 owner I, I do love that car but there's a lot more little special touches like you get your riding 650 out of a thousand here yeah you got the yeah you got the build plate and stuff like that even like um what's it called like the illuminated plate yeah so you, you don't, don't even get no any don't even get any like door illuminations or the seal plates just it's just for purely for what they've just wanted to keep the weight down and and yeah i think um for me we were talking about a bit about cost cutting and budgets and stuff yeah. like that this this is when for me vw were in their prime for for the mark yes seven, they definitely really, yeah they, yeah well i mean what second biggest car manufacturer in the world behind um what toyota they've got billions yeah they, they've got yeah. so much money to invest in these cars they want the golf to be as good as it can be yeah for how long they've been u- using the golf uh, it's, but, it is definitely they've done it well i i it's my my favourite by far. No, definitely, and we literally will never see something like this. You never see a free door. You never see a manual. You never see a golf like this in yeah, petrol yeah. form. Not again. new, no, not at all. No, we, and the thing is, is as well, like the Club Sport S is, the Club Sport S is a, a phenomenal car. But if I was to have one, I think I'd be more precious of it. You know, I thought the I'd, same. I'd be like really careful with it because of the value of it, because of the, the rarity of it. Whereas this obviously is is a little bit rare still in its sense, no. but it's. I'd, I'm happier driving this how I want to drive it rather than a club's boy that I'll probably all I'd want to do is keep in a garage no exactly and, and I'm completely with you you know that odd occasion as well like you know I don't have that many people in the back of mind to be fair but when you do it's yeah. it's quite nice you yeah, know, yeah you want people to enjoy the car yeah. you know you want to do what you want to do in a club sport S, you're like oh yeah sorry I've got a golf but but the, but the thing is what you could do is if you've got a club sport S, you could just have to do a couple of runs to get your friends yeah around. exactly so they'd enjoy it driving, more. That's, that is a, that's not a bad idea that's a very good point <laughs> very good point and you also get like um so they, they get rid of that i mean i don't know how much weight saving you're losing a center console yeah I, I i like i said like this uh a fr- area I yeah <laughs> a friend james's retrofitted one it doesn't look too bad but I, i'm not sure if there's actually much contact between the side of the seats and the armrest but i've never really been that uh, bothered by it no I, I think i think just leave it because you still get the practicality and actually do you still okay so you, on these you lose um you lose under seat the storage which in the mark eights don't have anyway oh right, okay so they've lost that and I, I can't see but in the bottom right if you got that yeah, yeah a little copy you lose that in the eight. Oh right i don't know that so loads of things that they take out yeah just, and it's it is literally just cost cutting it's yeah. really really bad even like simple stuff like gas strut on it and stuff like that you can't yeah i saw that yeah it. and it's got a very weird like sort of semi-foam plastic sort of engine cover, oh yeah we're la- laughing weird. about that with another owner as well it's all pedestrian safety stuff but oh is it yeah, oh, oh, but, oh, it's, right, okay. but it's like your head's gonna hit the bonnet which is pretty hard you know it's not it's not it's gonna hurt if you crash yeah. into someone and I, I guess the block is what they're just worried about. Obviously, that could hurt someone if you crashed into him. Yeah, so if you uh, fall out of a multi-story car park and you land directly in the middle of the bonnet, you, yeah, should, you should be okay. You should be fine. You'll be like, oh, it's a cushion now, yeah. basically. So that was their thinking. And again, and this is where safety on, and regulations will always eventually win yeah, government of course, reg- yeah. regulations. So you've got to kind of get into a car at a right time frame, basically. And for, for me, between... It was kind of when like um, a lot of cars sort of started being shown more on like YouTube and stuff yeah. like that. You started seeing them more from like 2013 through till about 2017. I love that era yeah. of cars. Yeah, very just, good. Just, yeah, very just good. some of the cars that were made. No one was really fussed as much about emissions. No. And you got some amazing You got away with cars. a bit more, a bit more noise, a bit more Larry. Now they're like literally, no, they, 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 they just don't don't yeah. allow it anymore. Now it's restrictions and safety and emissions and noise, which is which is a real real shame. But no, we well you've you've got this and it's it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I was going to say so Alcantara wheel is that standard? Yeah, Alcantara steering wheel standard. Alcantara uh, gear knob gator standard. That's cool. Um, Alcantara here. Yes, Alcantara on the doors on the doors. Lever got, here as well. Yeah, and then you've got the stitching. honeycomb through the the sides of the doors and on the dash as well. These. Red stitch seat belts now i'm like i'm a sucker for like the little things and that's, lovely, the, that's yeah. the little things yeah. which are just that would just get me yeah very nice um completely i mean i've never as much i've literally admired 40 ifs and i mentioned to you before the only ones that i've probably seen have been at like vw dealers and they've just been on the forecourt yeah. and they don't look massively loved no, they're just no. like oh, here's a 40 if that we're trying to sell you yeah. for 35 grand or something yeah. at a time it's sort of just in the queue with all the other exactly, golfs and other but, cars that they've got there when you've actually got an owner who looks after it yeah you, you just like this is a proper proper piece of kit yeah and um yeah it, it's just absolutely amazing and it drives and i know you've so you've got a little bit of a tune on this one yeah we just went for uh, my friend's got a, a rolling road um, yep. pop dancing him 
did a couple of health runs just to make sure the car was in good health after picking it up. Um, did a couple of tunes, just went for some soft golf R tunes basically. It did really well, and then we kind of pushed it a little bit more and got it to a point where yeah, it's 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 not wild wild, but it's it can it can be it can, it, it can be. Well, it blew me away sort of initially. I was like, wow, that really does pick up. And like you were saying, it's kind of like first and second is similar to yeah, stock. Yeah, and then it's, you yeah, yeah, it's, it's torque limited a little bit just to try and stop it going absolute banzai with the wheel spin. So, but third, third to third, fourth is. Yeah, where the magic happens. That, that's where it's, <laughs> and it's definitely got the poke to go. But I loved, I loved the handling. Yes, we're, I mean we're, we're fantastic to find some roads, and it was nice and nice and quiet in the morning as well. Um, it it handles brilliantly. Yeah, it just feels so so confident yeah. on the front end. The the e the e diff on the front is, I, I, I don't even know how it works. I, I don't know I don't how they do it. And no, it was it. kind of even like in um, the standard GTI, people have said like it's literally something else. They, they, yeah. they've made something really really. Yeah, I find what it. it for me, it gives me like um, I get the feeling like I could just put the, my foot down; it will sort it out to get it rounder, and you don't feel like it's being held back to cope. If that makes sense, yeah. it's, it's either it's going to try and get you there as fast as round that bend as fast as possible, but it's not pulling you back, to winding you back to make you safer. It's just yeah, going to do yeah. what it can to get you round, and it's really weird. Obviously, coming back from front wheel drive hot hatches before, it's it's very very weird feeling because you feel like. You shouldn't be able to go around. No, de- that definitely quickly. not. And you'd think front wheel drive car manual. So we reckon what three seventy horsepower this. Yeah, it's just one. shy of three eighty brake horsepower and four forty. Ha- having driven it, you could it can be absolutely as pleasant and as easy to drive as possible. Yes, yeah, yeah. If you really get on it, then you're like, oh wow, this yeah, is really yeah. shifting. But it, it's just so compliant. Yeah, it, it's got that. You always feel like when VW make a car. They they leave about forty percent easy over yeah. what it can easily yeah, cope yeah. with. Yeah, it, it's almost like they engineered it to backwards, which so, is a smart thing. Yeah, because because you know, especially nowadays, tuning is the bog standard thing people do nowadays, it's, isn't it? It's so. a huge, huge thing as well, and it can be obviously if some people go for like you, you've gone for quite nice, nice people you know. Yeah, they, yeah. They've gone through the testing. If you get some not so good tune, that's where it can be quite hard finding these type of cars because yeah. you obviously wouldn't want any sort of damage yeah and stuff yeah definitely like that. yeah I, I definitely looked into it because it's got the as standard it's got the overboost which yeah i just well, found really weird so yeah that's what we were saying so from from stock this car is i believe 261 yes. and then with an overboost to about is it about 290 or yeah i think it's like something? i think it's like 286 or something like that for 10 seconds yeah so again this is all basically due to marketing that literally VW sort of saying we want the 40th to sit here, we want the R to sit here, and we want the Club Sport S to sort of be where the R is basically somewhere. Yeah, like somewhere that. around there. Yeah. Whereas if they had quite easily, because it's not that hard to put this engine back to 300, um, a lot of people would just be like, well, I won't have an R, I won't have a Club Sport S, I'll definitely have a 40th because yeah, it's and, like a no-brainer. Yeah, I think they, I think maybe they would have sold more of them. They, they definitely would have done it's because then you'd have the practicality of the golf sort of thing but then you'd have the the club sport s sort of power and, and even if you didn't put like the bushings and the subframe and stuff on it as well you, it's definitely it can definitely handle it is that it suits the car very well no definitely definitely and i um i was watching back a review which i saw on these where it was it was around angle seat i think i sent you it before oh yes yeah they did they did the golf range didn't they yeah so yeah. you got g I'll, I'll put it in the description as well if people want to check that out they did gtd gte standard gti gti 40th Club Sport S yes. and an R and out of all the cars they drove around the track they then went we actually think the 40th yeah. was the one to go for yeah. and again it was a three door manual in red yeah. and it's just that sort of like for the best balance of you want to have fun but you want to have a kind of a road car at the end of the day you don't want to I mean this, go shopping and yeah, yeah, exactly. get people in the back this is yeah. like genuinely I, I, I wouldn't say it's it's on 19 so you feel a little bit more firmness to yes. say on mine yeah. But if this was an on 18s, I'd say it's probably pretty similar to my art I mean, yeah, in terms yeah. of compliance. Yeah. Um, I keep keep looking back at it. When I came in, I was like, my car looks like proper old man spec. Is it's it's a it's a commuter car really. Um, no, I I do love it. But this has got the got the flair. Um, we were mentioning little things that you don't know, like the lights. Yes. So we were saying, and this is again. Just they they try to get it properly into the range for the Mark Seven. You've got so you've got one nice sort of set of LED U bends. On yeah, U bends. Yeah, which look, which, look, which look great. Yeah, yeah. And then for the R, they give you two. Yeah, on each one. Two two lit up. It's... And 
it's it's just it's just a bit strange how they think that those are the things that are going to make you choose between a car because for the most people no it's not really going to make that well like i said to you but when i first got the car i thought they were broken because <laughs> yeah. the second use weren't there i even googled it i was i was ready to spend a lot of money to it get looks, a brand new set of uh, lights like, it literally from... looks like it doesn't it but no it, it, it's it's right and when they went to the 7.5 the facelift there's no difference between r and gti everything uh, in, terms, right, okay. in terms of the lights they yeah. just do they just keep them the same um so yeah i'm i'm obviously going to be biased because i have a mark 7 but i genuinely cannot recommend people these cars enough a, yeah. a for the money they're frankly ridiculous money in, yeah. in terms of like when you consider a, a well specced I drove a Golf R which was pretty much well specced a Mark A and it probably would have been 45, 46 thousand yeah. pounds so that's too, that's too much money for me 45 edition again you're looking sort of 42, 43 thousand yeah. um, and then these they've had their depreciation knock not yeah. that they depreciated that much no to be <laughs> fair like I say if you go, if you go online and look the the prices they, they you have got some low prices ones with a high mileage low spec and stuff like that one. but then you get <laughs> high you get good they're, they're good prices they are and they've kind of like I say have been consistent for the last at least a good year yeah no definitely and familiar to me infotainment nice and simple yes yeah, isn't it yeah it, I physical dials yeah I I'm I'm one for buttons I like buttons that I can Traction press and control there yeah modes there yeah. Don't get me wrong. I think the I think the interior, the way on the Mark Eight looks, it's nice. I like that clean look. It's definitely twenty twenty one. Yeah, it's definitely. definitely into the that modern age. But I guess, and it sounds like you're pretty much the same. I'm, you know, I'm spending whatever it is twenty, thirty, forty grand on a car because I want to drive the car. So some people might be like, oh, I'm getting a car, yeah. and the infotainment yeah. which you can only really use when the car's not moving. I like. Um, <laughs> quick and easy to do what i want it to do so like if i want to do the, like the performance monitor or check the nav it's just one button i'm not having to go through different that, buttons and that's stuff the like same that, thing you know? i have and i've said this when i started my channel i have literally the exact same performance gauge on mine when i want to have a bit of fun have it in individual mode yeah. or race mode and then if you put it in like um the eco mode you get like this blue kind oh, of the, dark, yeah, yeah, the it circles, just, yeah it just calms it down yeah. makes it nice nice and more chilled um and then start stop i I got fed up with that after, um, well, I had ba battery change on the warranty oh, okay. for mine, and I was just like, I bet the start stop does that battery no harm. You know, it's just been poking yeah. it out. Um, Turned mine off. Yeah. The Club Sport S actually comes with it off as standard. Really? Yeah, so you've got to press it to turn it on. No so, way. I so, did not know yeah, that. So I've. I've done the same. I've turned it off because I hate start stop. Ah, oh, so yeah, you're the so, exact same as yeah, me. Yeah, and the good thing is, is if you turn it off, you'll get the little symbol to tell you that it's turned off, and then it disappears. But if you turn it off when it's on, when it's set for on to be on all the time, it will stay up. Oh, right. That's so it stays up for on the screen. But if you turn it off from the base start, it, yeah, it'll, it'll go off. Oh, but yeah, Club Sport S, yeah, that, it comes with it off. See, that's, no start, stop. And that's probably the more focused intention as well, yeah, isn't yeah. it? They've, they've really done that. Um, again, even with like traction control on, it doesn't, it's not massively intrusive either. No, 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 no. It just no, no. gets you around in a, in a more safe yeah. way. I mean, rather than just going, eh. <laughs> yeah, I, I think if, obviously, like when you drove it and you put your foot down, it will, it will kick in a little bit, but it's not, um, uh, like say, aggressive intrusion. It, it felt all. proper secure and probably why, you know, if you're, if you enjoy my channel and you know, you want to see features and stuff like that these type of cars i couldn't feel safer kind yes of, yeah yeah kind of definitely driving. And yeah that's, that's what you want <laughs> yeah like if i wouldn't drive like we were driving in my astro vx no exactly because you know well the front wheels just spin so yeah, much don't they yeah they don't they tend great to... for a straight line but i've heard like good. um is it understeer isn't it yes yeah, <laughs> it yeah, just yeah. Goes straight yeah. well i i had it and i um and my turbo went, so I replaced the turbo oh, and no. had a tune, and it was it was lovely, really quick, really good power figures. But everyone was like, um, on the forums, like, change the tires, upgrade the anti roll bars, and I did that, and it was a massive difference. Okay, but it still wasn't 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 it's golf. Not this. It's, it's not this. It's not GTI. It, the platform of this is is really really good, and they really did nail it. They they. And the, the truth is, it's all about money. Yes. And it's literally, VW had a lot of money because obviously the Mark 7 came out in 2013, but they would have been developing that for about a year or two yeah. before that to preparing them for it. They had the money to spend. And obviously the Golf being very much a halo thing. For yeah. Them. And then you've got the GTIs and you've got the club yeah. sports and they were introducing the R a bit more. Um, they, they weren't letting up in terms of the, the quality in this car. 
and it's why it hit the scene it hit a lot of magazines to sort of say yeah. why would you get an RS3 when you can get an R yeah and I think yeah I'm uh, maybe I'm, they did a really good job with it no I think they actually because it was it. um it was Evil magazine when it car of the year they did it in 2016 yep. it came second to a 911 R yep yep uh, of all the cars there, the BMWs, the Lamborghinis, Aston Martins, and it the Club Sport S. Club Sport S was the one to go yeah. for, and I've seen like the Mark Seven R's done pretty well on like um, like Evo tests and stuff yeah. like that as well. And I just always felt all the manufacturers then looked at those cars and were like, "Oh crap, we have to make yeah. a car like that yeah. now." And then obviously, eventually, everyone always always catches up. But yeah. one thing I would say, anything that people enjoy out of the Mark Eight Club Sport Forty Five or the Mark Eight R. You can thank these Mark Sevens yeah, because yeah, they've, used, yeah. they've they've not they've not yeah. going to take away anything in terms of like this they, this was a proper sorted car. Yeah, definitely, it, it they did really well, and I think that like say all the how well they did it and all the reviews they got, like say the the Club Sport S is like probably one of the most iconic hot ch- hot hatches I think. Yeah, and I mean I think um, for those what is it 150 in the UK? Yeah, is... 150 in the UK and I think it was 400 worldwide. Yeah, so I mean that is and then you've got to think I mean even with these you've got to think about cars that have potentially been written off. Cars yeah, which yeah. have been sort of like in any in any well, you know cat C cat D yeah. whatever it is. They, they, there's not they, as many as you think. They don't come up very often. I think online you, there's only ever maybe two or three at one time but yeah. then you can go for a period where there's none on on there at all. Yeah. So, but again, you the ones that are for sale, you can tell they've been look like tucked away, low mileage, and and again, that makes it hard for people then who wants to want to get into them and drive them because that's the yeah. thing. And, and I'd want to drive the car. 